Physics students, good afternoon. Mr. Fugit here. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at the work energy theorem, uh, something that we've been discussing in class over the past couple of weeks. So, uh, in this problem, we're going to be looking at uh, an object, uh, an escalator specifically, that is doing work on a person. Uh, we're going to be looking at how much work uh, that object is actually doing. So, this says specifically, this is problem number eight uh, on your homework over work energy. So, problem statement reads as this. Karen, our person in question, has a mass of 49.2 kilograms as she rides uh, the up escalator at Woodley Park Station of the Washington, D.C. Metro. Karen rode a distance of 56.8 meters, the longest escalator in the free world. The acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. How much work did the escalator do on Karen if it has an inclination, an incline, of 34.6 degrees? So because there's not a direct uh, visual given in this picture, that's usually where I like to start. And so we're told uh, Karen is riding an escalator, and we're told it's an up escalator, so we'll represent her going up. Uh, we're told a few things about the escalator. It has an inclination of, I believe it was 34.6 degrees. There we go. Uh, we also have, uh, we're told the, the length of the escalator. It's 56.8 uh, meters. So we're told that that's the distance Karen rode. So this would be kind of the hypotenuse of our uh, escalator triangle, if you will. It's 56.8 meters. Okay. So again, it's always good practice to take the values, numbers that were given, and try to put them into a picture. It's going to help us see what's going on here. Okay. So the problem asks us how much work did the escalator do on Karen if it has this inclination, 34.6 degrees. So right off the bat, when we're, we see that word work and we're asked to calculate it, there's two ways we can go about that. One, work is equal to, yeah, I'm kind of keeping the pattern from the other videos, force times displacement times cosine of the angle between those two. Uh, next, uh, the other approach uh, is work is equal to a change in energy. Now, as you all will see, in a lot of these different uh, problems, you can solve for the work being done either way. It really doesn't matter uh, which approach that you use. Uh, in the previous example, we looked at force and the displacement uh, for the dogs pulling on the sled. Here, uh, because we kind of did the force and displacement approach uh, last time, I'm going to try to show you how to do. we can use the other approach and get a similar uh, result. Not the same as the last problem, but similar in that uh, we can still get a correct value regardless of the approach we take, okay, as long as we're doing that approach correctly. So when I look at this escalator, I'm going to use uh, the approach for change in energy. And okay, that's just what I'm going to do uh, in this video. Now, specifically, when we see uh, work being done, that should tell us something is changing in our system. And as we look at the escalator, well, we should see something changing. What's changing is our height, right? So the work being done is going to change our position, what we would call our uh, potential energy due to gravity. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you know anything about an escalator, we know that the escalator is constantly moving at a pretty constant speed. So even though we're moving, our kinetic energy in an escalator isn't changing, right? We have kinetic energy, but it's not increasing or decreasing in this scenario. It's remaining constant. And remember, work is meant to add energy in or remove energy from our system. And here, the energy added in is going to move us up the incline, the escalator, if you will. Okay. So what we need to figure out is we need to figure out how high we're actually moving, right? The, a part of that potential energy equation involves our height. And we have to be careful here. This distance we're given is the distance of the escalator, not exactly our height. I'm going to call that uh, value y uh, to describe its, uh, its a vertical height. So before we do anything, I'm going to go ahead and use some trig to figure out that y value. I've got an angle. I've got a side opposite that I care about and a hypotenuse that I know. So opposite and hypotenuse, so ka toa, well that tells me I should probably use my sine function there. So what I'll do to find my y value is this. Sine of our angle, 34.6 degrees, is equal to the opposite side, which here is the y value that we don't know, divided by our hypotenuse, 56.8 meters. That's how we would set up that expression. 
value, the y value, the height by itself. And I'm just going to multiply both sides of our equation by 56.8 meters. This value will cancel out on the right hand side. 56.8 meters will move to the opposite side. So to find our y value, I'm just going to take 56.8 sine of our angle, 34.6, and that will give us our y value, our vertical height. Do you make sure when you plug this in that we're in degree mode, not in radian mode, otherwise it's not going to perform that uh, function correctly. So 56.8 sine of 34.6, make sure I'm using the right numbers, there we go. I get a value of 32.2, and this is a height, so it will be in meters. 32.2 meters. Now again, that's not our answer, that's just a way for us to figure out our height. So I'm going to put in here y equals 32.2. If you get something that's larger than your hypotenuse, that means we've probably gone through that operation incorrectly, right? Because that hypotenuse should be the largest of those three sides of our triangle. Okay, so as we said before, we need to find the work that's being done. We're looking at a change in energy. And here, it is our potential energy due to gravity that is going to change. So, then let's take these values and see if we can use them to find work being done. So overall, work is a change in energy. Specifically here, work is going to change our potential energy due to gravity. Since we're ending, or excuse me, since we're beginning here, we'll say with no potential energy, we're on the ground. We'll say that our final potential energy, that's going to represent how much it changes. Because uh, remember, delta is final minus initial. Well, if our initial is zero, then we really can just focus on the final potential energy. So the work being done is going to equal our potential energy at the end, the top of the escalator. So potential energy, as you all should be familiar with now, is expressed by mass uh, times gravity uh, for the planet that we're on times the height of our object. And I believe we're given the mass in our problem statement. Yes, mine was 49.2. So I'll take those values and plug them in. Work is equal to uh, the mass. I'm down just a little bit. 49.2 kilograms times G for the Earth. 9.81 meters per second squared times the y value, the height uh, that we found. Not the hypotenuse. Okay? Here we're looking at the height of our object. And that would be uh, what we found, which was, I believe, 32.2. Make sure. Yes. 0.2 meters. Good. So now it's just a matter of plugging those in, doing a little bit of work. No pun intended. Okay. I get a value for work, uh, multiplying mass times gravity times our height of 15,567.2 joules. Remember, work is measured in the same units as energy, so it would be in joules. Now, if I double check our key, it uh, looks like we get 15,567. Is that what we got? That's what we got. There we go. We're right in the right range. Okay. So uh, that's how we would go about approaching uh, this style of problem. Okay. Now remember, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you can still use the force and displacement approach, and you're just going to kind of go about that a different way. Right? The delta x value would be maybe the length of our escalator. The force would be uh, maybe a, a normal force, a force of gravity. We'd have to do a little bit of work uh, kind of solving for those. Uh, we'd use maybe the angle uh, between those two. Uh, but again, I want to show you all that we can use either approach, either uh, force and displacement or a change in energy uh, to get that answer. So hopefully that will get you started going in the right direction on this problem. Uh, best of luck.